let's jump down to maintenance. Now, if you, again, have had any experience in the past on this, if setting up a maintenance plan for a fleet of machines in the past was pretty daunting. You would have to go into each individual asset and you'd have to set up the hour intervals for each one, um, you know, where they're at in the PM schedule, right? Because maybe I own machines that have anywhere from 50 hours to 5,000 hours and they're at different intervals in here. Um, what Caterpillar has done here is a huge improvement to help get you started. Let's look at it. So you'll notice I've got a couple of toggle buttons here. Um, I can enable tracking from, from one button here and I can go in and I can edit the actions for this particular one. So I'm gonna go in here and hit edit. Now you'll notice that expected daily runtime right now is hard coded. So it's saying, hey, this thing's gonna run eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. Probably not realistic for your operation. You'll notice that the actual daily average here is about 5.7. That's probably a little bit more accurate. So if I'm setting this up, I'm probably looking at that and going, you know what, I'm actually gonna do the button here that says the average runtime based on what my telematics box on my machine is telling me it's gonna run. So hey, maybe you start double shift in here uh, because maybe you picked up another job. If you have that selected, it will automatically adjust your expected runtime for you. Again, nice feature to have so you don't have to maintain it. If I scroll down here, here's, I've got my service intervals. I can come in and edit any one of these at any given time I want to. And here's the key. Let's say that I've set this up on this one particular articulated truck we're looking at, and I wanna copy these services to the rest of my articulated trucks in my fleet. No problem. You click copy services, you go select those machines, you're done and you're off to the races. I don't have to go into each one and set up each one. Another feature that's nice, you'll notice that it is starting at a particular service meter reading. This system will automatically pick you up where you are within the service interval. So I don't have to give it a starting point. I don't have to say, okay, let me put a PM4 in so I, I, can, I can have a starting point for the rest of my PMs. It automatically picks up where you're at. Now, if you wanna customize that, if you wanna edit that, you absolutely can. You can say, hey, I wanna start with a PM1 at 8,000 hours, no problem. All you gotta do is tell it to do it. Now, if I jump up here into summary. So this would be once I've already, I've set up all my PM schedules, I'm ready to go, I'm actively managing my PMs from here. I will say just a little disclaimer here, we realize that you may already have a, a, a PM tracking tool that you're using and leveraging. Maybe, maybe you still operate from a spreadsheet. Maybe you have a whiteboard on the wall that you're, you're managing this because that's what you're comfortable with. This comes with the new Vision Link application, whether you use it or not. We can help you walk through this to get you going because I know PM schedules can be overwhelming. Uh, they can get complicated. Uh, but this really organizes it for you in a way that you kind of can see everything in a, in a very quick, organized way. So let's pick one. Again, I'm going to hit the drop down and you can see, hey, here's, here's some that I've got overdue that I, need to, that I need to deal with, okay? Notice the three dots over here. So I'm going to come into this particular one and I got lots of options here. We're gonna do complete, but before I navigate away from this, um, I did wanna mention, you'll notice at, on a couple of these screens, you're gonna see buy parts. If you've never bought parts online, now's a good time to try. So I did wanna point that out to you. Notice we got checklist, we can add this to backlog. Again, you can see, you've seen some of this on some of the other screens. So I'm gonna hit complete. So I've navigated to this one 926M, this particular one's got 2218 hours on it, and here's my completion form. It's gonna to default to today, so today is September 1st. It's also gonna to default to what hours are on the machine the last time it checked in. Now you can backdate these, no problem. If this PM was done three days ago, all I gotta do is backdate it. If three days ago the hours were 2210, no problem, update the hours. Service completed by, we're just gonna say 
card or machinery. I can put a work order in here. I can put notes in here. And I'm gonna hit complete. Now, this is a huge upgrade. I wanna, I wanna really kind of dissect this so you can see how this, how this works. You'll notice that it says the scheduled completion for this particular PM was at 1,285 hours. We actually did it at 2,018 hours, so we were a little bit overdue. Now it's automatically telling me what the next PM is for this asset. Now we did a PM3. That PM3 is not gonna push out a PM4. So your lower level PMs are never gonna trump your higher level PMs, okay? So we may have to do a little adjustment here. Notice that we've got some options here. I can just continue service as scheduled. So if you thought about that for a moment, let's say this was a PM1 and I was 50 hours late. Your next PM that's due, if you're on 500 hour intervals, is gonna say it's due in 450 hours because you were 50 hours late on the last one. But let's say that I wanted to adjust that. So I'm gonna say reset, and I'm gonna say the next service interval is gonna be a PM4, and I'm gonna say that PM4 is due at 2,500 hours. And I wanna generate a timeline. This is really cool. I'm, I'm a visual learner. I know a lot of you are as well. This automatically shows me not only the one that I was a little bit late on, but it also shows me a timeline of what the next schedule looks like. Do I wanna stick with this or do I wanna change it and adjust it? That is a super awesome feature when you start thinking about how I want to handle my PMs it's not just gonna be a fixed number. In the past, it would just make you continue as scheduled. Now, I can actually adjust this and reset it. Nice feature to have. So I'm gonna jump into one particular machine, and you'll see that we've got, again, similar view, it's just now I'm looking at one asset. Again, I wanna point this out, big yellow box up here at the top, buy parts. If you've never tried that online, do it. Down here, when you start looking at the different PMs, within here, again, if I go buy parts, here's the thing I really like about this. There is a pre-populated parts list for each one of these intervals. If I click on buy parts, it automatically dumps me into parts store. It will give me that parts list. And hey, maybe, maybe you don't use that seal or maybe you've already got that filter on the shelf and you want to adjust that when you're buying parts, no problem. You get that list right there and you can start editing it. You can adjust it how you need to and it's automatically in there. You'll notice here that I've got a history button here and I've also got service history here. Well, what's the difference? When I'm over here on the PM side of this and I'm looking at history, what this is going to tell me is, is what was the recorded PM history for this asset. If I click on service history over here, what this is going to show me is any work that you've had done by, by us, by Carter Machinery, by another cat dealer, it's going to show you the header level information of what's been done. So if you had some undercarriage work or, hey, maybe you had a, a tilt cylinder worked on, it's going to show you that all right here.